All this comes from notes made by Binyam in Guantanamo, where he's now held. He could, of course, have made the whole thing up. What makes you convinced that he's telling the truth? Binyam has told me the exact date that he flew from Pakistan to Morocco. After I'd written that down, got it unclassified, so it's on paper, then I get to cross-check that against the physical logs of those CIA flights, and bang, it's right on. Flight logs, physical proof too that the Polish airstrip landings were CIA flights. The same Gulfstream which flew Binyam to Morocco, the N379P flew here, secretly, and not once, but repeatedly. After the Gulfstreams, the Boeing N313P, apparently carrying businessmen from Afghanistan. On the 22nd of September, a Boeing 737 was to land. I had serious doubts about it, because the airport was unprepared to accept this type of plane. Somehow it managed to land. Then these cars with tinted windows approached, and then the plane took off. That same Boeing would soon fly Binya Mohammed, the young Muslim asylum seeker from Kensal Rise, on his second rendition from Morocco to Kabul in Afghanistan. It was January 21st or 22nd, 2004. About 10 p.m., I heard a plane. There were five U.S. soldiers in black and grey, with face masks. They did not talk to me. They cut off my clothes. There was a white female with glasses. One of the soldiers held my penis, and she took digital pictures. She was one of the few Americans who ever showed me any sympathy. When she saw the injuries I had, she gasped, and she said, Oh, my God, look at that. The sympathy was short-lived. Binyam was left to face new tortures. And the Boeing took off again, this time to a tranquil Spanish seaside resort. With Binyam delivered, it was time for the CIA rendition crew to pack their face masks away and relax in a luxury hotel. The Marriott's records show they used the spa, had a massage, ordered shrimp cocktail and Baileys, incognito, anonymous, unaware that their Boeing had caught the eye of local plane spotters. The plane looked like a business plane, so I took a picture of it because I'd never seen a plane like that in Palma before. He put his picture on the web. The next day, the Boeing crew were off again for another rendition in Skopje, Macedonia. My name is Khalid El Masri. Since 1994, I've been a German citizen. There, on the other side of Europe, this German car dealer with no history of crime or terrorism had been held for three weeks. He was about to get the CIA treatment. The Boeing crew were at Skopje Airport waiting for him. They told me I would be taken to another room and given a medical examination. I was taken inside. The door was closed and then blows rained down on me from all sides. They ripped off my clothes with a sharp implement. Then I heard them taking photographs. When the blindfold was briefly removed from my eyes, I saw about six, seven or eight people in that room. They were all wearing masks and black clothes. 
alle in Schwarz. And none of them said a word. Und kein einziges Ton hatten die gesagt. Ich wurde gedemütigt. I was humiliated. Erniedrigt. Degraded. I don't want to talk about it. The German police have it all on file. His statement says one of them forced a blunt instrument into his rectum. The brutality El Masri alleges can't be verified. But everything else checks out. International flight logs show the Boeing N313P did fly from Mallorca to Skopje that day, then on to Afghanistan. And as they in the flight, once inside the plane, I was thrown to the floor and shackled, both to the floor and sides of the plane. At one point, I was given an injection, and I was gone. Within two days, the Boeing crew had rendered British resident Binya Mohammed and German Khalid El Masri on the same Boeing to Afghanistan, where coalition special forces, allies in the war on terror, were already a law unto themselves and had established their own special fiefdom. They told me I was in a country where there are no laws, and did I realize what that meant? They could bury me or keep me in this prison for 20 years, and nobody on earth would ever know. This was the Khaled El Masri who reappeared six months later in Albania, where the CIA had dumped him. I thought, they'll let me take a few steps and then they'll shoot me in the back. He saw a man and begged for help. I told him I'd been abducted by the CIA and that they'd taken me to Afghanistan. He started to laugh and told me not to tell anyone this, as people would make fun of me. But the CIA, the world's most powerful intelligence agency, was about to be rumbled by the humble plane spotter and a few curious journalists. They didn't believe him and thought he just wanted to become famous and get on television. And they said my picture could be the proof that he was telling the truth. After months of checking, Mallorca's daily paper had its scoop. We said CIA uses Mallorca as a base for kidnappings by, by plane. We had located the, the picture of the, of the plane in Mallorca. We had, we had already the official data confirming that this plane had, had landed in Mallorca and taken off uh, from Mallorca. These are the two lists of, of the passengers of the Boeing. They stayed here one, uh, one night and then they went to Skopje to, to kidnap or to make the rendition of uh, Khaled al-Masri. 